All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm, this is my third time trying to do this. It's just not turning out. Um, it, too much happened in these games, and I don't have enough time to really get into them. So um, we're going to just touch on these games real quick, and then we'll talk about in a second video I'm going to do. Yes, I'm going to do two videos today. The second video will be a short one, but it's going to break down exactly where we are in the playoffs because all these games really clarified our playoff picture uh, last night. All right, first game. Again, I just go through chronologically. Danbury travels to Binghamton, and uh, yeah, low-scoring affair, but an exciting game. Both teams played fantastic defense. Uh, fantastic team defense really uh, brought the best out of the opponent. Uh, Danbury's play brought the best out of Binghamton. Binghamton's play brought the best out in Danbury. Uh, very exciting game for a two to one game. Uh, I'm going to try to fly through this. All right. Johnny Ruiz, he gets on the board first. Beautiful, beautiful goal. Uh, beautiful setup. Beating Connor Mack and Anima. That's at 1130 of the first period. Um, shots are 16 to 12 in favor of Danbury in the first. In the second, it's Cameron Clark. He tucks one home past uh, Connor McCollum to see Max in the goal. Um, and so it's 1-1. That was at 141 in the second. And then things just kind of settled down for a long time. We didn't have a goal for, uh, yeah, my goodness, uh, like 30 minutes. Um, both teams, again, playing a fantastic system game. Um Finally, at 11.45 of the third period, Tyson Kirkby on the doorstep, tucks one home uh, past Connor McCollum, and that's your game winner. It's a 2-1 win for Binghamton. Uh, but again, both teams played extraordinarily well. This was a very entertaining game despite the low score. Uh, Danbury is now 30-18-5, still five points behind Motor City in the race for home ice advantage between that those two teams. Uh, Binghamton improves to 35, 16, and 7. Excuse me, 35, 10, and 7. I don't have my glasses on. And, uh, of course, they're still in first place. Uh, 34, 88 on hand. Uh, this was the game everybody was excited about and talking about, and it, uh, it, it lost its luster very quickly because the game was so one-sided uh, for so long. Uh, so it's Sammy Bernard in goal for Elmira, uh, Spencer Kozlowski in goal for Watertown. First period, not bad. Uh, Dustin Jusso does get on the board very quickly for Elmira, just a minute 47 in. And so it's one nothing Elmira. And that was it for the first period for scoring. Now there were a lot of shots. Watertown outshot Elmira 15 to 10. There's a lot of good flow, a lot of good action. Uh, the teams go to the dressing room and come out, and only M Elmira was ready to play. Um, Watertown first got themselves in the play, uh, into uh, penalty trouble frequently, and that's been their Achilles heel all year. Uh, and uh, Elmira just capitalized. They came out hungry. So it's a power play goal by Stephen Klink at 112. And then Kyle Powell scores in the power play at 8.01. At this point, Kozlowski is pulled. In comes Eloy Bouchard. And uh, we know Brian Verbeek tends to be kind of quick pulling his goalies. Um, but things didn't go well for Bouchard. So Stephen Klink scores just 32 seconds later, again on the power play. Then David Gaeta scores on another power play goal, uh, not even a minute later. And so now it's 5 nothing. Um, you're thinking, my goodness. Watertown thought they stopped the bleeding. Ryan Verbeek gets on the, the score sheet. Yes, Ryan Verbeek, Ryan Verbeek. Yes, father and son. Ryan Verbeek uh, earned his place, though, with playing on this team. He played five years, major junior, okay, four years in the OHL and a year in the queue. So he's a decent, decent player. And uh, he gets on the board, gets his first professional goal. Um, 1339, 
Dassault so scores again. This time it's 5v5. And so Bouchard is pulled. Kozlowski comes back in. Bouchard only lasted for five and a half minutes. Um, and uh, so then, uh, yeah, we it's six to one at this point. And Almira is firmly in control. So in the third, Watertown let their frustrations get the best of them. Try to do a Rangers Devil style line brawl. Only problem was Elmira was not willing to go. And so Watertown ends up with a whole bunch of people in the box and a whole bunch of people removed from the game. Uh, even the coaches, Verbeek and uh, Jurich, were going absolutely Neanderthal on the bench. Uh, it, it was just a bad, ugly look at that point. So we finish out the third period, finally. Stephen Clink gets on the board at 4.07. He gets his hat trick. Again, on the power play. So all three goals on the power play. Um, Watertown collects themselves and said, let's at least win the rest of the period. Ryan Verbeek scores at 8.56 and Trevor Lord at 15.52. So 7-3 to three is your final. Elmira now 20, 31, and 2. But more importantly, they reduce their magic number to six games. So if tonight, when the rematch happens, if Elmira wins... That's it. Watertown's eliminated. Elmira's in. Uh, that, and that will be official. Uh, Watertown now 17, 30, and 5. Shots for the game 45 to 28 in favor of Watertown. So Clink, Hattie, and an assist. Powell with a goal and four setups. Bernard saves 42 on the night for a nice win. Uh, Verbeek with the two goals. Ryan Verbeek, that is. All right, Kozlowski, 21-25 in 54 minutes played. All right, down south. Yep, I'm wearing the Columbus gear because they officially clinched home ice advantage throughout the playoffs as they beat the Blue Ridge Bobcats 5-2. Um, in the first, uh, right off the bat, it's uh, Justin McDonald scoring at 102. Yeah, he's he's got the scoring race locked up. He's got, uh, he's got a 20-point edge with uh, five games to play. Uh, Austin Doe scores at 247. So right off the bat, it's 2 nothing, And uh, shots in that first period, 12-9. Uh, but, uh, yeah, rough start for Owen Liskovitz. Meanwhile, uh, William Lavalier for the River Dragons, looking very solid. In the second, it's uh, Sequoia Swan. He ends up getting what would be the game winner at 524. Um Blue Ridge manages to climb back into the game, make it competitive for a while. It's Vlasov Vladislav. He scores for the Bobcats at 7.03. So at the end of two, it's 3-1. to one. Blue Ridge fans are thinking, okay, you know, not too bad. We can get back in this. Um, until Josh Pietrantonio scores in the third. Uh, you know, that, uh, that kind of put the game out of reach. Uh, Jacob Volk did score at 10:25, and uh, but then uh, with Liskovitz pulled, uh, an empty net goal by who else? Justin McDonald. So yep, uh, five to two win, 38 shots for Columbus, 28 for the Bobcats. Um, Vlasov and Volk both with a goal for the Bobcats, and Liskovitz stops 33 of 37 in 59:04. Uh, meanwhile, J-Mac with two goals, Doe with a goal and assist, uh, Lavalier, he saves 26 of 28, uh, 27-20 on hand. I was hoping for a bigger crowd for Columbus. I don't know if they make 100,000 or not. It, it's looking doubtful. They've got to average like 4,800 a night for the next two games. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, Columbus clinches first overall, and they are 42-6-3. Blue Ridge. 14, 32, and 7. Okay. And then uh, Carolina, they take care of business. They double up Mississippi. And that clarifies something, which we'll talk about in the next video. Um, yeah, it's Carolina getting on the board first. Uh, it's Yuri Pastuka. He scores, puts one past uh, Joseph Shepard. Um However, uh, Philip Wong was able to beat Mario Cavallari at 527, so it's 1-1. Uh, 
Uh, before the third, uh, first period could end, though, Jan Salak gets a power play goal, eight seconds left on the clock. And that really seemed to do something psychologically to the, uh, the Seawolves as uh, Carolina would end up reeling off uh, the next three goals in the second period um, and dominated the second period. Uh, now, mind you, Mississippi was playing with only 14 skaters, uh, so they were shorthanded, and that plays a part in things too. But, uh, yeah, so there's goals by Nate Ke- uh, Keeley, uh, Jacob Schnapp, and Yuri Pastuka again, and suddenly it's 5-1. Uh, that really took the wind out of the sails for Mississippi. Uh, shots were 17 to 7, Carolina in the second. And then in the third period, a uh, little bit of a comeback. Uh, Justin Portillo, he ends up getting two goals in a row, uh, both within a minute five. Uh, first was an even strength goal, and then the second was a power play goal. So it's 5 3. Mississippi thinking, we can get back into this. But Carolina kind of clamps things down. Uh, there was a change in goal. Uh, uh, um, Austin Malin came in. I think it's Malin. Melon or Malin. Malin sounds better. Uh, he comes in in relief and uh, played pretty well for his first time out, 15 minutes played. Uh, but the only goal scored was Roman Kramer at 12.58. That uh, officially makes it 6-3. to three. Carolina, uh, they nail things down. They improve to 38, 11, and 3. Uh, Mississippi with the loss. They give third place to uh, Port Huron. Uh, Port Huron was still playing. Uh, so, yeah, it's Port Huron in third and Mississippi in fourth. That's the way it's set. Uh, shots, final shots were 39 to 23 in favor of Carolina. Salak with a goal and three assists, as did Roman Kramer. Cavalieri stops 20 of 23. And uh, Portillo with two goals, Wong with a goal and assist. But, yeah, it's been a rough go for Mississippi the last two months. Uh, Final game, Port Huron. uh, They came into the game feeling like they needed the win, but in the end uh, they they were given the third-place spot. However, they did pull off a victory against Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge has been playing much better as of late. Of course, they're coming off a three-game heater. But Port Huron ended that uh, pretty yeah, pretty convincingly. Uh, the game was fairly even as far as play, but uh, Port Huron just got the better opportunities. Uh, it's Connor Foley scoring at 18-52 of the first. Uh, and then in the second, Dominic Laubert gets his first professional goal. At 451, congratulations, Dominic. Put the Prowlers up 2-0. Uh, wait, they weren't done. Just, uh, you know, it was 27 seconds later, Austin Federley scores. Just that little burst, and that was enough for Port Huron uh, as Austin Federley beats Bailey Stevens. Uh, meanwhile, Makar Sokolov playing very steadily. The last couple times Sokolov's been in goal, he's played very efficiently. Uh and uh, you know he's got his he's got his feet under him. So in the second period, of late it's Tyler Larwood scoring on the power play. Um, so that would make it three to one. Uh, no more goals the rest of the game. The, the teams kind of uh, stood off on each other. Port Huron really clamped down on their defense. Didn't allow Baton Rouge much opportunities. Only four shots in the final period. And so, yes, it's a 3-1 final in favor of Port Huron. They improved to 27-20-6, locking down that third seed. Baton Rouge, they were hoping to pass Blue Ridge tonight in the standings. Uh, We'll have to wait another day to see if they can do that. They are 13-35-4. Good crowd of 38-72 on hand. Baton Rouge will clear 100,000 with the fans. So there you go. That was the night. Yeah, I was only three, uh, three and two on my predictions last night. So, oops. But anyway, uh, yep. Lots of games tonight. Uh, we've got three rematch or five rematches tonight. So tune in tomorrow and see how things go. Tune in later on. I'm going to do a specific short video breaking down what we absolutely know for the playoffs because we know quite a lot now. All right, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. We will see you again soon.